Settings are important. My sprint and slide buttons are accessible. I can't let them jeopardize my thumbsticks. Now I have the equipment. Text size is increased to increase awareness. My grapple button allows me to look and aim while using it. My reticles thickness and opacity are increased, giving me a sharp target. My audio is set to dynamic so I can hear what's on the other side of this door. And my crouch button, this is Lucid. Halo Pro, Halo World Champion, and MVP. So when you find yourself alone in a hallway with him, what settings do you need? Grab your controller, grab your um, hammer, and uh, start removing these three buttons. <laughs> This setting affects how much your sensitivity changes once you zoom in with a scope or aim down sight. Fine tuning this setting can help you aim more precisely and quickly adjust to different reticle positions. Don't overthink this one guys, it's kind of like finding the sweet spot with your ex's favorite toy. What I mean is a little goes a long way. There are several different zoom levels you'll need to account for. These are basically between pistols, battle rifles, snipers, but don't go overboard with it guys. You only need a little bit. Increase that speed up so you can snap to those guys' heads. You may not think this is a big deal, but it actually is. It does something that you don't necessarily expect. See, this setting affects the position of your weapon on your screen, which impacts your accuracy and reaction time. Fine tuning this setting can help you find the optimal position for your weapon and improve your overall aim. Now, like the zoom sensitivity, you can have different offsets based on the weapon you are using. This is how I use it. See, there's an imaginary line between the tip of your gun to the reticle which is why in episode 9 of me getting onyx with zero mechanics, I still had great aim even without a reticle because my gun aligns to my target. Now this setting affects the volume and clarity of the in-game sound effects and music. Well, you don't really need to worry about the music part, but fine-tuning this setting can help you hear important audio cues, such as footsteps or gunshots. These can be crucial in locating and tracking enemies. If you can't hear the enemy's footsteps, you might as well be playing with your speakers on mute. Now, picking the right one between compressed and dynamic could be the difference between someone squatting on your face and you squatting on someone else's. Personally, I have mine on compressed, so the second someone makes a noise within range of my ears, I know exactly how far away they are because it's consistent each time. If you choose dynamic, when someone's closer to you, they're louder. Now this might make sense in theory, but what actually happens in game is a slow ramp up of increased sound. What I want is consistency each time. So the second I hear someone further away from me, I don't have to wait for the slow ramp up of sound because I'll know they're within range of being a threat. Just like this trash right here, thinking he could sneak up on me. Yeah, right, buddy. Now this affects the appearance of your aiming reticle, obviously, duh. But I mean, look at the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. The one on the right is obviously sharper, which will improve your overall aim. The better the target, the more accurate you can be. I mean, reticle shape and size is, it's like choosing the right outfit for your first date. You wanna make a good impression. You want to make that first shot count and you don't wanna go home empty handed. <laughs> like me. Here are my settings I recommend, but it's totally up to you. This is your ability to scan the environment and locate enemies and weapons. See, when you add this button to your arsenal, it can help you spot things more quickly, giving you an advantage in combat. It's kind of like having x-ray vision, but without the whole superhero thing. Like, you can't see through people's clothes. Not that I'd want to do that, but yeah, you can see like guns and shit. I mean, check out how blind I am in my How to Get Onyx series. I'm so blind, I cannot see the shock rifle. It's right in front of me. I swear I just saw a shock rifle. No, where'd it go? But if I had the scan mechanic, I would have found it. This setting affects the overall clarity and smoothness of the graphics. It can help you find the right balance between visual quality and performance. And we all know you need good performance for this game to even work. Got a guy me, got a guy me. Up, oh, teammate just left. Sick as fuck. Awesome. What the fuck was that delay? I'm at their flag. I'm gonna flank. Hold on, I'm gonna get an angle. I'm gonna get an angle. What? Are you kidding me? If you bring this all the way down, you're not going to be sacrificing too much quality, but instead you'll be gaining more frames per second. And you know what they say about guys with high frames. Yeah. 
text size, specifically the text from the kill feed. Adjusting this setting can impact your ability to read important information quickly. See, when it's on default, it's kind of like trying to read the fine print on a legal document, except that legal document is saying how many enemies are coming to kill you. You're going to want to make sure that you don't strain your old eyeballs, okay? Guys, if you're like me and have been playing Halo for the last 15, 20 years, and I know some of you are based off of YouTube analytics, then you're going to want to do your eyes a favor. There's three options to choose from. Personally, I use this one, but yeah, it's all preference. The rest of these settings are pretty standard across the competitive Halo scene. Feel free to pause the video right now. And then after a little bit, we're going to get right into my controller binds, because if you want to maximize your efficiency when you're playing this, you're going to need to have the best controller binds in the game. But you first need to understand why. See, I picked a random example to show you how my new binds are superior, specifically my jump, sprint, slide, and both triggers. Look here, fighting against this random player, I don't know who he is, but I'm able to re-scope in after he shoots me because I have left trigger bind to the correct location. On top of that, I'm able to jump, sprint, and slide without jeopardizing my aim. Watch how I jump up here and I'm still able to look around and crouch and jump and move where I need to. Now, I don't know who this guy is. He's probably not very good, but yep, yeah, not very good. But that leads me to my next question. What's the best controller to use? The best controller, in my opinion, is the Battle Beaver. Mostly because you can have six paddle buttons on the back of your controller. So let's start with those. My top left paddle is crouch. Middle left paddle is throw grenade. And bottom left paddle is check the scoreboard. This is critical because it helps me know when I need to push. I can see how many enemies are down and I know, oh, I can still keep my reticle up and ready and know how many enemies are alive or dead. Now the top right paddle is switch weapons. So when I'm aiming down sight, I can YY be good to go. Middle right paddle is sprint. So if I need to curb slide, it's pretty easy. And then finally, the bottom right paddle is to switch grenades. You can see in the bottom right, I'm switching grenades. Spike, switch grenades, frag. I'm able to do all of these things while still using my left stick and my right stick. Next up are the triggers and bumpers. So left bumper, jump, left trigger, aim down sight. This is incredibly useful in this day and age of Halo. If I get de-scoped, it's so easy for me to re-scope back in as opposed to in the original bumper jumper layout, you had to use the right stick to zoom in. It's part of the reason why I'm able to get so many great headshots with the sniper rifle. So right bumper is beat down and right trigger is fire. Now I don't use the A or the X button because they're linked to my paddles. I only use B, which is reload and interact. So if I need to pick something up, I can do that with B. Ah, rockets. I should also mention that if I need to drop a weapon, it's on one of my paddles as well, the switch weapon paddle. And then scan is now on Y. So if I need to find a weapon, I can just press Y and it'll scan. Now I don't need to necessarily have my reticle up and at the ready when I am reloading. I mean, I'm not firing, right? Same when scanning. If I'm scanning, I don't need my reticle always at the ready. Finally are the sticks. Obviously left stick moves around and right stick aims around. But when you click these sticks in, left stick for example, pings. This is incredibly helpful when I'm in a gunfight and I'm shooting and I need to ping right over there where I'm shooting and it's on my movement stick. So it's not as it's not going to throw off my aim aim completely. And then on the right stick is my equipment. So if I need to escape out of an area and I need to turn around quickly, I can shoot that guy and keep going with my right stick. Now I don't use the directional buttons. There's the hassle, but in true sloth fashion, let's break down the settings and controls. I'm able to jump, sprint, and slide without jeopardizing my aim. Got some great big text up here on the kill feed. I'm able to see kind of how many enemies are alive or dead. I have an equipment and I'm able to aim while using it. Now because my move dead zones and look dead zones are locked in, my reticle is good to go. This makes for an easy bout BR. Take that trash out real quick. And now the crouch button is doing oh shoot we died 